Let's move over to the story next. Israel says it has claimed control of the Gaza border. Since the weekend, it has pounded the strip with the fiercest airstrikes in the 75 years of the conflict with Palestinians. This is despite Hamas' threats to execute Israelis held hostage. Joining us now via Teams is Israeli ambassador to South Africa, El Belo Tsarkovsky, who is uh, the ambassador of Israel to um, South Africa, joining us for this uh, conversation. Ambassador, good morning. Thank you so much for making time for us. What's the situation currently? Good morning. Well, as, as well, we all know Israel was attacked on Saturday, which is a holiday uh, for its parents. Uh, it was brutally uh, attacked by armed gang gangs of terrorists of Hamas. They penetrated Israeli territory through tunnels, by air gliders, by boats, landed in Israel and started to terrorize, to kill uh, innocent people, families, elderly people, babies. And yesterday, uh, some of the journalists had an opportunity to enter one of the uh, kibbutzim, one of the villages that were liberated by, uh, from the Hamas. Uh, and, and they could, they could uh, see uh, babies that were beheaded, that were killed in their cradles. It, it's an absolutely appalling, murderous attack by the Hamas terrorists. And What's... I want to stress here, I, w I just want to stress, the conflict of Israel is not with the Palestinian people. The conflict of Israel is with Palestinian terrorists, like Hamas, like Islamic Jihad, that spread terror and their only aim is to destroy the state of Israel. And we will have to defend our people. This is our duty, and that's what we are going to do now. How many people, at least from the death toll that has been shared with you, Ambassador, have died from the Israeli side? Well, from the Israeli side, uh, as of now, and, and unfortunately, these numbers are, are raising, we have 1,200 uh, people that were murdered. Most of them, vast majority of them, are civilians. Uh, they were killed in their houses, or uh, there was a party that was that took place, a peace party actually, uh, not far from uh, from this area. And 260 young people were killed during this party just by massacring. And we also have uh, about 3,000, uh, more than 3,000 actually, uh, people who were wounded. Some of them are still in life-threatening condition, and. We have 150 civilians, old people, Holocaust survivors, uh, families, uh, babies that were kidnapped into Gaza and are now held as hostages there by the Hamas. Are there any Americans amongst those who've been held hostage? Well, as of now, uh, there are quite a number of uh, foreign uh, citizens. Uh, including Americans, we don't yet have the uh, we, we don't have the number yet. We know that there have been 14 American victims, uh, American citizens that were killed by the Hamas. We have uh, British people, we have Russian, we have Chinese, we have Thai, we have a very many, uh, quite a number of nationalities uh, whose citizens unfortunately were killed or uh, are now being held hostage in Gaza. Yep. Do you know, Ambassador, where these people are being held hostage? Well, they are being held hostage in Gaza, uh, uh, in Gaza Strip, by the Hamas. We don't know the exact location. Uh, obviously, the Hamas is not publishing them. But, uh, but unfortunately, um, that that is the situation. And uh, I believe that that this kind of barbarous, atrocious attack has to be condemned by everybody. And I have to say that we have been receiving uh, calls and uh, telegrams and uh, letters and emails of support from various uh, people in South Africa and uh, from, from, from all walks of life, basically. Yep. And uh, this is really uh, very, very uh, heartwarming for us. We have also received uh, Huge international support uh, from from uh, uh, different countries, uh, from Africa, from Europe, uh, from the Americans, uh, Asia, everybody, 
and uh, and I think uh, I think people understand and realize that these kind of actions cannot cannot take place. They have to be condemned. They have to be stopped, and they have to be prevented. If you don't know where they are, Ambassador, do you not run the risk of, as part of your military operation and retaliation um, and also this full-on offensive of also eliminating those people who are being held hostage? Yes, well, we, we are not talking ret about retaliation. We are talking about dismantling the terrorist infrastructure of the Hamas and of the Islamic Jihad, these two organizations that perpetrated uh, these heinous attacks. So it's not about retaliation, it's about fighting specific targets uh, and attacking specific in infrastructure, operational infrastructure of the Hamas in order to prevent these attacks from, uh, from, take place, from taking place. Regarding the, the, the hostages, of course, uh, their situation is, is uh, of prime, prime, top priority of the Israeli government. Yeah. If they are of prime uh, priority and you don't know where they are, yet the bombardment still continue, do you not run the risk of also eliminating them? I think we, when, we, when we attack a specific target, we check exactly what is there and we don't attack uh, blindly or without, uh, without uh, thorough examination. So all the, the targets are, that are being attacked are being operational uh, infrastructure of the Hamas. Well, there have been buildings as well and residential areas that have been attacked, um, Ambassador. So it's not true that it's only operational centers that have, been, um, that have been targeted. And also part of that is that you have civilians as well that have also been killed in um, what you say is not a retaliation. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, the Hamas, and you can examine that this is a fact, it uses the civilian population of Gaza as human shield. Israel has announced that it's going to attack and requested all the civilian population to leave the, the areas that are going to be under attack. So the Hamas is uh, installing its infrastructure, and we have evidence of this, in residential areas, near kindergartens and schools, and even in mosques. So, of course, unfortunately, uh, there are there are casualties. But we really requested all the civilian population to leave because the, 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 we need to defend our people, and we need to make sure that such heinous attacks cannot will not uh, repeat themselves. Well, isn't that also um, against international law to order civilians to leave uh, the territories? Ambassador? Well, I don't think the question of international law here uh, is, is a question at all. Uh, how, how can we defend our, our citizens? Do we wait for another attack from Gaza? Because it's against international law to destroy operational uh, terrorist uh, infrastructure. I think, uh, is there any country that would agree to uh, accept uh, such an attack and just continue? as if nothing happened, with one, more than 1,200 victims, most of them are families that were butchered, civilians that were killed, without any, any, any uh, reason at all. Would any country have, uh, agree to, to, uh, to accept such a, such, a, uh, such a situation without acting in self-defense? Yeah. So, so does Ambassador agree that um, Israel, in its efforts of self-defense, is in violation of international law? The act of self-defense is part of international law. We are not violating international law. We are defending our citizens. This is an essential part of international law. Yeah, but I just said now that um, international law says that you can't order civilians to leave their territory. Um, which means that Israel is going against that international law. We did not order the civilians to leave. But that's what, what you said, said just a minute ago, we, Ambassador. No, no, I said that we let the civilians know that there is going to be an attack and ask them for the time being to leave the areas that are going to be attacked. Because we need to dismantle the terrorist infrastructure. We cannot dismantle it 
by speaking. We have to dismantle it by acting. And for this, we are trying to save lives, to save lives of civilian people of Gaza with which we have no conflict. Our only conflict is with the Hamas terrorist organization. And there is no other way to dismantle the, ter the terrorist infrastructure than by attacking it. And for this, we requested the people more than once we requested to leave. We didn't order them to go away. We requested them to leave for the time of the attack. Once the attack is finished, once the terrorist infrastructure will be dismantled and Hamas will not be able to perpetrate such heinous attacks, they can come back and, and we have, again, we have no problem. As I don't know if you know, but Israel has provided to the people of Gaza electricity, yeah. water. There were more than 20,000 traders every day entering Israel in order to to, to, to trade, to buy uh, uh, goods, etc., from Israel. So there were there were relations. There were there were there, were, there was interaction. There were uh, food and, and 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 goods were entering Gaza from Israel every day. And this is this is something that is also uh, has to be taken into consideration. But such a heinous attack, such such a such a, an atrocity cannot uh, remain un, un, uh, un, uh, un, uh, unanswered. This is, this is impossible and this is the duty of every government. Yeah. I don't think in any country could, could able, was able, would be able to suffer such an attack without, without any attempt to prevent it from, for, uh, for the future. It's impossible. Yeah. So, so, so you speak about the supply of water, food and so forth. And you know, of course, what the uh, defense minister had said, Yola Galland. No water, no food, no electricity, no fuel. What's the intention behind this? And also referring to them as um, we are fighting human animals here. Well, Hamas are human animals. When you see the pictures of the babies, that were decapitated in their cradles, I don't think there is any other way to describe it. When you see the, the video clips that were taken by the Hamas terrorists themselves of how they were killing uh, children, how they were killing families, how they were attacking young women, how, how would you call it? What, 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 what would be the right, the right way to describe it? And now we are at a state of war, and in a war, it's a war. We, we need to dismantle, we need to destroy the Hamas infrastructure. And we will do everything to achieve it. There is no other way, because if we will not achieve it, we will have another attack, and another attack, and another attack. And this is not something we can, we can accept. Yeah. Is there any intention to launch a ground incursion? Well, these are operational plans. I'm not going. I, I cannot, and I'm not going to discuss them uh, on on uh, on the media. Anymore. Yeah, um, but are there discussions around that? You don't have to speak about whether there is confirmation that that will happen. But are there discussions around having a ground incursion? Well, I I, I I'm sorry. I will not be able to to comment on on this question. Okay. And um, the emergency government, do you know how far Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is um, with regards setting up the emergency government? Well, the discussions about it are, are going on uh, right now. Um, I'm not involved in the discussions, obviously, so I don't know the, the details. But I know that there is a, a strong intention uh, to form a, an emergency government because we are in an emergency situation. Okay. And then also the other question is in relation to what's happening in Lebanon. Um, would you say that right now Israel is fighting Hezbollah as well as Hamas? So it's a two-pronged um, battle that Israel is facing now. Well, it is a two-pronged battle. Uh, we, have, uh, we, we have had some attacks uh, from the Hezbollah from the north uh, yesterday. We also had an attempt for, to infiltrate uh, the Israeli territory and there were some exchanges of fire uh, and uh, unfortunately among the Israeli defense forces we had some casualties. Uh, so yes, we, we, are, we are having this, this um, 
this attack also on in the north it's still uh, on a, on a small scale but we are ready for any eventuality ready for any eventuality two battles that israel is currently facing i don't know whether you have enough equipment the usa has said that um, they will ensure that you have all the necessary equipment um, that you require has there been any indication as yet around the inventory of the armaments that will be sent to israel well uh, i think uh, by and large israel uh, is uh, unfortunately we are constantly uh, we, we constantly have to be ready for any kind of attack and uh, I think that, that we have the necessary equipment to uh, resist it. So, so no inventory list as yet from the United States around what they will be providing? Well, I, I again, I'm not, I'm not uh, involved in the, in the discussion between Israel and the United States, but by and large, Israel is ready. Okay. A final one, um, Ambassador, of course, looking forward to um, what could possibly happen in the future. Calls have been made uh, to have mediators. There were reports that Israel has rejected Egypt uh, being a mediator. Is Israel open to South Africa being a mediator at all? Well, I would say that uh, in order to be a mediator, first you need to have two sides. In this case, we have one side, which is Israel, and the other, which is Hamas terrorist organization that does not recognize the right of Israel to exist. So you cannot really have any kind of negotiations with somebody who says, we don't recognize your, your right to exist. You, should, you cannot exist. So it's very difficult. It's basically impossible to have these kind of negotiations. And when you read, the Hamas statements, the Hamas charter, they, they claim it openly. Their aim is to destroy Israel. And we cannot have negotiations to this, to, with, with somebody who claims that Israel has to be destroyed. Yeah, but, but Hamas is not the only uh, stakeholder here. You have uh, the PLO as well. So is there any window for mediating and is South Africa a possible mediating candidate? Well, I would say that in order to um, to, to uh, engage in these mediating efforts, you need to talk, that, that any kind of mediator has to talk to both sides. The mediator has to talk to both sides. Do you think that South Africa yeah. is capable of that? I, it's not for me to say. It's for the South African government to decide. But again, I, I want to repeat to say that any potential mediator has to have channels of communication with both sides, not only with one side, but with both sides. Do you think that South Africa is biased in this particular case? Again, I don't want to comment on South African position. I will stick to what I said until now. Okay, thank you so much for your time. That is uh, the ambassador of um, Israel to South Africa, Ambassador Eli uh, Bel Sorkovi, speaking to us there about the decision that has been taken, uh, rather not the decision that has been taken, but rather the offensive on uh, Gaza currently, which is currently underway. And also Israel saying that dozens of its fighter jets struck more than 200 targets overnight in the neighborhood of Gaza City that is said had been used by Hamas to launch its unprecedented wave of attacks.